Welcome to Heat Wave Intro to Yoga. It's only 95 degrees in here today, but of course it is because we're teaching. So today we're doing balances. Now, balances in the body vary from day to day. Some days they're there and some days they're not. So keep note of that. We're going to start in um, forward fold, simple forward fold position. If you know that these are challenging for you, you can practice near a wall. You can actually be holding onto the wall as you do them or just be near the wall so you can grab it if you need to. Um, hopefully we'll warm up the right way so that you'll feel a little bit more able with this. Okay, so in your forward fold with your knees a little bent and your feet hip width, we're just gonna warm up the feet because they're so important in balancing. So rock your weight gently forward and back. And you don't even have to pick up your, we'll pick, it, we'll pick them up later. So just feel how loading weight into different parts of your feet goes up your body, right? If, you're, if your weight's in your heels, you may feel that more in the back of your hips, right? If the weight's in your toes, you may feel it more in the front of your hips. And then you can rock a little bit side to side, a little bit of a sway, you can roll your feet a little bit so you're on the the left side of each foot and then the right side of each foot. And you'll feel that in the sides of your hips, maybe your knees as well. This is an exercise in grounding. How do we ground through the feet? And what does that mean in the rest of the body, right? What you do with your feet will have everything to do what happens in your pelvis and your shoulders too, probably. And then just circle your weight around your feet. So you're gonna move your weight in a circle can drop it back and then to the left and forward and to the right a couple times and go the other way. Just noticing maybe some of these movements feel better than others. Some of them feel more familiar than others. And just make sure your head is hanging. You don't have to hold it up. Most of us, I give that cue a lot in forward folds. Most of us are so activated and busy and on all the time that we forget. Oh yeah, I can drop my head here. <laughs> Alrighty. When you're ready, bend your knees a lot and come on up to standing. And um, we're gonna just come up onto the toes and come down. So bring your weight up onto your toes and set it down. You can move your feet wider. And in fact, as you do this, Maybe move your feet around. Take different positions with your feet relative to each other. You can put one foot forward, one foot back. Challenging your ankles, challenging your arches. There's lots and lots of interesting little structures in your feet. Hmm, somebody's a dancer. <laughs> All right, and then um, let's come up onto the toes and hold it. See what you got for holding it. Let's see if we can get through about six or seven breaths. You're gonna feel that, it seems like a really simple thing, but you feel it all the way up your whole back body, don't ya? Those glutes are working. <laughs> awesome. All right, and then when they start to really cramp, you can set them down. Now we're gonna come up onto the heels and walk around a little bit. So now we're activating rather than the back of the legs, the front of the legs, all right? You can bring your feet wider. All right, interesting. You didn't think this was yoga, right? This is what we call functional yoga, okay? And then come back to flat. Now, come out onto the outside edges of your feet. Now, obviously, if you have injuries in your ankles and you can walk around on the outside edges of your feet, if you have injuries in your knees or ankles and this doesn't feel good, this is not for you. You can fast forward. And then come onto the inner edges of your feet. This is the oddest one. Super weird, right? <laughs> but this will help waking up the bottom of the feet and all this musculature in the legs will help us balance. Okay, awesome. Um, first balancing series, this is actually a, a known yoga pose. <laughs> and you can, yeah, face, face front would be great. You're gonna bring your feet hip width and this is called utita. You can bring, your, bring the weight into your right foot and just lift your left knee up. You can grab the front of that knee with your left hand if you like, or just hang there. So this is like Apanasana, which we've been doing, except with a different orientation to gravity. Both hands is fine. So feel into that standing leg. Three anchor points, the standing foot, the engagement of your core, and your gaze point. 
in yoga, we call this a drishti. You look at a point, not like vibing it, not like staring at it, just looking at it will help ground you, usually a few feet in front of you on the floor. We're gonna take that knee out to the left. So this is an open-hipped utita. Now, Pamela has a lot of range of motion in her hips. Yours might not look anything like mm -hmm. this. That's fine. Take a few breaths. And then you can, if you want to put your foot down and take a rest, you can. And then we're going to, yes, she does. <laughs> okay, awesome. And we'll, we'll come back, bring that knee up again, and take it for a twist, which we know how to do from yesterday. We're going to so the knee isn't going to move so much as your torso is going to move. You keep the opposite hand on the knee. And if it's okay, your the, op, the hand of the same side that the, the knee is lifted will come out behind you and your gaze can follow. Three. Now you can do this up against a wall. You could do this leaning on a wall if you're feeling super tippy. Come out when you're ready. All right. So these are Utita Hasta Pada Gustasana variations. The full-on pose is doing this, holding your big toe. You got that? Do you want to try? I'll try. Okay. Not many humans can do this, okay? But I mention it only because Utita Hasta Padagustasana, the Sanskrit name for the pose, is hand to big toe pose. That's what it means. So we'll try it. Most humans are going to be doing it with their knee, okay? So opposite side. Left, left leg is standing, balancing on the left leg. Right knee comes up. You can start with the knee, and then, if it's there, extend the leg and grab your big toe with your peace fingers. You can straighten it to whatever degree. If you want to straighten it halfway, so, so if, you're, if you're folding forward a little bit in your back, keep it straight. Okay. All right, there you go. That's it. That's it. That's what she's got. Okay, awesome. You can just grab the knee. If you want to take it out to the <laughs> side, <laughs> that hand can stay on your hip. It could come out. Whatever, however you want to use that left hand. And then switch hands, bring that knee back to center and take the twist. Again, you can do this at the wall. You can take, take time in between the poses to set that leg down and give your left leg a rest. Utita variations, beautiful. All right, coming on out. So you notice those little um, adjustments that you make? The idea is not to come into the, the balance and stay there like you're in cement, right? All those little adjustments that your body makes is the value of the pose, right? You're making those adjustments. It keeps your body resilient and strong. Okay, warrior one. We've done this pose before. Right leg is forward, left leg is back. So here's your warrior one. You can have your hands on your hips to start. And we're gonna take warrior one into a balance called airplane. So hands can stay at your hips. They can come out behind you like wings, or if you're feeling like you want the bind, you can interlace your hands behind you. But let's just keep the hands like wings today. You're gonna to kick up off the back foot and balance on the, on the front foot. The back leg can lift to whatever degree. Now the leg you're standing on can be bent. That knee can be as bent as you like. Try to straighten the leg behind you. If you want to fold a little more, find a little more rotation in that hip and come toward parallel, awesome. But if you want to be a little more lifted like you were, that's great. Not twisted lifted, but like, like oh, that. that way, yeah. Yes. Right. Okay. All right. And then come on down to warrior one. We're going to do another variation, but I don't want to hold you too long. So if that felt good, you're going to stay there and and we're going to experiment. If you have low back or injuries, you're going to stay with, war with airplane. Here we go. Come up onto airplane. And now if your low back is happy, reach your arms forward. Your weight is going to go a little further back in your heel. It's a little easier to come perpen perpendicular to the leg with the arms forward, paradoxically. This is beautiful warrior three. You don't want to lift that left hip up. You want to keep it pointing toward the floor and then forward fold at the front of your mat. Nice. Shake out your head. If you want support for a wall in this pose, you want to put your back foot on the wall. All right, come on up, left foot forward, warrior one. Um, if you want, sure, why not? We'll show it. So you, you have your stance width away from the wall. Yeah, I want to back up a little bit probably. There we go. 
and then kick up to your airplane. Yeah, you're gonna have to come back, back a little further. Yeah, there we go, kick up to your airplane and put that back foot on the wall or in the air. Nice. Might be harder. <laughs> So there's so much strength in your back body, keeping your torso lifted, your, your glutes on both legs are, lift, are working, but especially that lifted one. And then when you're ready, set it back down. You can come back on the mat. <laughs> there's also a variation you can do with this with a, with a strap on the back leg, which I love. Ask me about that sometime <laughs> when I see you. All right, left leg forward. We're going to come into airplane one more time, and then if your low back is happy, we'll try warrior three. So come on up to airplane, and then arm sweep forward, turning that right hip and, and the right toes down toward the floor. Left knee can be bent, right? You don't have to have a straight standing leg, but you're trying to straighten the lifted leg. It's probably not the, not the cue you were expecting. One more inhale and forward fold at the front of the mat. Beautiful. Awesome. All right, come on up and we will come into warrior two. You're gonna want a block or a facsimile of a block for this one at the front of your mat. So warrior two with the right foot forward. And here, we're gonna move this block for you a little bit more forward. So you're gonna want the block about 18 inches in front of your front foot. So you got your warrior two. Oh, there you go. You've got your warrior two, and you can imagine, since we're balancing, what's gonna happen next. You're gonna bend to that front knee and kick up off the back foot and put your right hand on top of that block. Now, if this seems absurd to you, I understand, do it at the wall. We'll do it the next time at the wall on, this, on the second side. This is called half moon pose, Ardha Chandrasana, one of my favorites. Standing knee can be bent, just like the last one. Lifted leg is reaching and flexed. Both legs are working hard. You've got that beautiful hand-to-hand -hand straight arm alignment in the arms. And you can look up or side or down as long as your neck is happy. And then gently bend the front knee to land the back foot and come on out. Awesome. How'd that feel? Great. Great. Okay. All right. So if you want to try this at the wall, we're going to do it on the left side. And you probably don't need the block, although you certainly can use the block. You need to be a little bit in that front foot, a little bit far away from the wall, because that's probably too much for you, depending upon how large a person you are. Because you want to be able to lean into the wall if you're coming up on the wall. And then when you're ready, you're going to kick up off that back foot. And the hand comes down and just peel yourself back so your torso is on the wall. Just let that hip fall onto the wall. Oh my goodness. Isn't that awesome? Yes. Beautifully stacked. And your head too can be back on the wall. Look at that. So nice. And <laughs> she's using the chair rail. It's so perfect. It's not cheating. <laughs> it's, not cheating. It's, it's aligning. This is beautiful. So this is how to do it at the wall. You can, because you have the support of the wall, you generally don't need a, a prop underneath your hand, but if you want that there too, that's awesome. Take a few breaths. And then bend the standing knee to come out. So maybe you can pause, do a couple of these at the wall, do a couple of them in the middle of the room, see if you can balance half moon. It's a beautiful pose, Ardha Chandrasana. First time I did it at home many years ago, my husband looked at it and said, Mondrian painting. <laughs> if, if you are into visual art, I always think of that. Okay. Um, Coming onto the middle and to the front of your mat, however you want to do, we're going to do a couple more standing balances. First one is called Eagle. So you're going to stand on your right leg. Your left knee is going to lift up and cross over your right. So the right knee is going to bend as you cross that knee over. If you can wrap your foot around behind you, that's great. More likely, it's not going to go anywhere near that. And you can also put those toes on the floor, right, for your stability. Now, hands can come to heart center or cross to your shoulders. The classic arm variation here is to wrap your left elbow underneath your right elbow and bring your hands palm to palm. 
So weight is in the standing heel. So your, your, your weight is, is back and you can stick your butt out behind you. Elbows lift up to shoulder height. And eagle pose, Garudasana. You come out, you come back in. Eagle gaze, right? Find your gaze point on the floor. So think about your foot on the floor, your belly holding you steady, and your gaze. Those three points will anchor you. And then when you're ready, you can unravel and come out. We'll take it over to the other side. So you can see that warming your feet up helps in these because so much is happening in your feet. So when you're ready, the right knee will, will cross over the left, wrap around to whatever degree, right elbow under. So the same side that is on top in the legs is on the bottom in the arms. Sinking into your heel, lifting your elbows, finding your gaze point. Take a few breaths, feel all those wiggles. That's your body being strong and grounded and your nervous system being well attuned and releasing when you're ready. <laughs> Beautiful. Okay. One more standing balance. Tree pose. Classic pose that everybody sees as a representation of what yoga looks like. <laughs> Groovy. All right. So we'll stand on the right leg. Left foot is going to come up. The sole of your left foot is going to come up somewhere on the inside of your left leg. Could be on your shin, could be on your ankle with your toes on the floor, or somewhere on your thigh. Now, you just don't want it on your knee joint. Your knee doesn't go that way. There's no hinging left and right in your knee. So either up or above or below the knee, or, on the to or toes on the floor. So then find your, your preferred place, and then hands come to heart center. Tuck your tailbone under. You want a lot of extension in the front of your torso here. Glutes of the right leg is really working. That's your grounding. And then if you're like, your arms can float up high. Your gaze is gonna be wherever you feel steady. If you feel super steady here, you can start to walk your gaze up toward the ceiling. Becomes a beautiful heart opener. Three, two, and release. Lovely. Shake it out, wiggle, wiggle, take it over to the other side. So finding the extension in the front of your hip, you're pressing the foot into the thigh and the thigh into the foot. There's a beautiful midline symmetry that's happening here. Don't let your right hip get too hiked up, drop it down. Three two, and release. Beautiful. Let's take a forward fold. Let's release your low back. Shake your head out. Yes, no. Hmm. And then when you're ready, you can walk your hands forward to a downward facing dog. And drop your knees to the mat for child's pose. Knees nice and wide, big toes touch behind you, forehead reaches the floor. This is a very grounding pose for all those lifted balances that we did. Sometimes balancing is a reflection of how balanced our life feels. So if you're feeling really unstable, try the sequence again someday when you're feeling super stable or vice versa. It can be very grounding. Alrighty, my dears, we'll see you tomorrow for our seventh and final class on backbending and inverting.